In this tutorial we're going to talk about polymorphism. You should have already gone through the previous tutorials on inheritance because to understand polymorphism you need to understand those concepts. And as always we'll try to visualize what's going on. So to start with let's have a look at the class hierarchy that we've created. At the top of the hierarchy you can see that we have game object and inside of game object you have the update and draw methods as well as some attributes. We also have two child classes player and enemy and they inherit those methods and attributes. We also had a couple of different child classes of enemy, including Simple Zombie and Teleporting Zombie. So we might have some code that looks like this. Simple Zombie, Zombie 1 gets a new Simple Zombie. And then when I tell that zombie to update by saying Zombie1.update, it'll rotate and then move towards the player. We could also have some code that looks like this. Teleporting Zombie, Zombie 2 gets a new Teleporting Zombie. And then when I tell it to update by saying Zombie2.update, it'll rotate and move towards the player but it'll also teleport because again remember we overrode that method that we inherited from enemy. So the question then becomes one of can we say something like enemy zombie gets a new simple zombie? The answer is actually yes and to understand what's going on we need to look at the assignment operator. So if you remember the data type on the left hand side has to match the data type on the right hand side. So if you look on the left hand side you can see that clearly we have an enemy. On the right hand side it looks like we have a simple zombie but it's also an enemy because of inheritance. You may be asking yourself, can we do the opposite? Can we put an enemy into a simple zombie? And the answer is no. The reason is, is because even though simple zombie is an enemy, an enemy is not necessarily a simple zombie. So now if we go back and we look at our code, you can see that when we say zombie.update, it's going to update like a simple zombie. The reason is, is because at runtime, zombie is a simple zombie. A little bit later on in our code we might say something like this, zombie gets a new teleporting zombie, and this time when I tell the zombie to update, it's going to update like a teleporting zombie. Again the reason is, is because at this point during the runtime, the zombie is a teleporting zombie. The technique that we're using is called polymorphism, poly meaning many and morphism meaning forms. The idea is that at runtime, the variable is changing behavior because it's actually changing data types. If you look at the code below, you can see that we have an enemy that starts out as a simple zombie. So when I call update at this point, it's going to update like a simple zombie. A little bit later on, just like we saw before, zombie is going to change data types to a teleporting zombie so that when we call update, it's going to behave like a teleporting zombie. If you're looking for a more concrete definition of polymorphism, it's when we have a parent class variable referring to an instance of a child class. Now you may be asking yourself, why does this work? Well, polymorphism actually relies on inheritance. Again, looking at our class hierarchy, you can see game object has update and draw, and because enemy is a child of game object, it has one of two things that it can do. It can either inherit those methods or it can override them. The same thing is true for simple zombie and teleporting zombie. So when we look at our code, you can see that these calls to zombie.update are guaranteed to be there. Again, these classes either inherit those methods or they override them. So if we go back and we look at our code again, you can see that we created two separate lists. We had a list of simple zombies called simple list, and we had a list of teleporting zombies called telelist. Well, this isn't exactly what we want to do. It would be nice if we could combine these into one list, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So in this case, you can see that we have a list of enemies called enemy list. As we start to iterate through this list, notice that we've changed the syntax just a little bit. So we now say for each enemy E in the enemy list, E.update. Currently E is pointing to a simple zombie, so it's going to update like a simple zombie. The same thing is going to be true for the next four zombies. They're all simple zombies. Where it gets a little bit more interesting is where we move E to point to a teleporting zombie. At this point, when we say E.update, it's going to update like a teleporting zombie. And the same thing is true on down the list. So in summary, polymorphism is when a parent variable is referring to an instance of a child. The variable changes behavior during runtime because it's actually changing data type during runtime. A common question that you'll hear from employers is, what's the difference between inheritance and polymorphism? Well, if you remember, inheritance is where you absorb the properties of another class. So you can have inheritance without having polymorphism, but you can't have polymorphism without having inheritance. So that's it. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about polymorphism. Just like inheritance, it's going to reduce the size of our code, and it's a really powerful technique that we're going to be using throughout most of our games.